know him. Praise the Lord. He is a mighty God, our Heavenly Father. Praise God. And we are so grateful for his presence. Amen. In our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Suzanne. Great selection. They're always good, but these, for some reason, were particularly good for me. Amen. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Thank you and Mike for all of your assistance and all the help that you're providing to make this possible for the people who are not able to be here. And we understand that, but we're looking forward to a time when we can all be together again. In the meantime, just be led by the Holy Spirit. When you feel comfortable, why, come on back and we'll be, we'll be here waiting. Praise the Lord. So we're looking forward to that day. And uh, in the meantime, stay safe. Just keep your trust in the Lord and all will be well. Amen. Thank you, Tim, again for a great opening. We appreciate it so much. I, I just, I'm always grateful for the words that you share with us. And so often, in fact, I don't know if there's been a time that they haven't connected with what the Holy Spirit was saying to me about a message. And so it's great to have that affirmation and, and uh, encouragement from the Holy Ghost via Tim. Praise the Lord. And we appreciate that so much. God bless all of you. All of you out there in the uh, cyber world, praise the Lord, that are w with us on uh, Facebook. We appreciate your presence here as well. And you are present. Amen. Our spirits are connected by the Holy Ghost. And regardless of the distance, we are one. And amen, I just pray you're feeling the presence of the Lord as we are here. Praise God. So God bless all of you. Thank you again for being with us. Thank you for your support. And uh, we love you. And just uh, praying and believing for God's protection and provision for each and every one of us. Amen. And he is more than able, right? Praise God. So thank the Lord. Amen. Uh, the past, the present, and the future walk into a bar. <clears throat> it was tense. <laughs> Did you read that in the paper where the coin machine at the U.S. Mint, uh, it just out of the clear blue, it quit working? I mean, it doesn't make sense. You're making it more difficult than it has to be. You, you know that, don't you? What do you call two octopuses? And I don't know if it's octopuses or octopi, but either way. What do you call two octopuses that look the same? Identical. Okay, two goldfish are in a tank. One says to the other, do you know how to drive this thing? Tank. It's a tank. Come on, Mike. You're, you're with me, Mike. Come on. Military. Come on. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. <clears throat> You've suffered almost enough, but not quite. Sally sent me to the store the other day to get uh, six cans of Sprite. When I got home, I realized I had picked seven up. <laughs> Thank you. Praise the Lord. I'll be here all week. Thank you. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Thanks. Love you. Praise the Lord. Appreciate your uh, tolerance. Amen. So uh, I want to get to the word here this morning. And uh, to start with, I'm going to read uh, Psalms 91. And uh, Su Suzanne, you can go there if you want to, but you don't really have to because I'm going to read it out in my Bible just to make it a little easier for me because I try to personalize this. I, it is a scripture that I quote every morning and I declare it over my family over the church family as well so it's part of my uh, professions or confessions you might say uh, every day and it's not routine or rote it's just something that uh, you know I, I think back to 9-11 there was all that going on back then and and uh, I, I, I pray that God doesn't bring this stuff I mean obviously we realize that but I do pray that out of this there will be genuine uh, experiences with God for people who have not known him and for those of us who do know him. And I know that that's the, the heart of God is uh, that whenever evil comes, he'll bring good out of it. And so I just pray that uh, lives will be truly changed for the better as a result of this. It will cause people, as Tim has said, to, to really take the time to spend with God and, and to seek his face. And to see and listen for the answers that he has for the situations that we're confronted with. Because he does have all the answers. He saw this coming long ago. This didn't come as a shock to him. So... We're all okay in him. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to start reading here. And it, this is how I try to read it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now I want you to keep in context where he's telling us that we have uh, access to, what we have access to. And so he says, uh, uh, and this I, I will say, amen, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. Amen. He is my God, and in him will I trust. Amen. Surely he shall deliver me.
from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings will I trust. His truth or his word will be my shield and buckler. Amen. I will not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me. Only with my eyes will I see and behold the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord, uh, pay attention here to this part, because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, my habitation. There will no evil befall me, neither will any plague come near my dwelling. For he will give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They will bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I will tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon will I trample underfoot. Because I have set my love upon the Lord, therefore will he deliver me. He will set me on high because I have known his name. He will, I will call upon the Lord and he will answer me and will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and honor me. With long life will he satisfy me and show me his salvation. Praise the Lord. So let's go then from there to John 17 and verse 20. John 17 verse 20 through 26. John 17, 20 through 26. And if you can kind of keep the Psalms 91 in your mind here as we go on. So the Lord is saying, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. Praise the Lord. Uh, my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Praise the Lord. Romans 8 and verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Praise the Lord. So you're seeing this place of habitation and, and how Jesus wants it, the same thing. The, the psalmist was writing prophetically of what, would, what uh, possibility there would be for people to be in Christ or in God, actually have that union with him which was not available to them when that psalm was written which is why I'm sure that it was prophetic but in Romans 8 and 1 he tells us that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus amen and that word condemnation means judgment against sentenced and punishment to follow so to paraphrase Romans 8 and 1 we would say there is therefore now this minute not one bit of judgment against, no sentence passed, and no punishment following them that are in Christ Jesus. That's good news, because we all deserve something other than that. Praise God. But let's look at Romans 8, verses 33 through 35. Romans 8, 33 through 35. Praise the Lord. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? So here's a warning. This is a warning to anybody, including the devil, amen, who tries to condemn the ones that God has justified or made righteous, amen. 
the ones Christ died for, the ones who have made Jesus their habitation. Praise the Lord. When we read that in Psalms, it sounds like pie in the sky. But the truth is, what God is telling us is, if you've made me your habitation, no evil will befall thee. No evil can come near your dwelling. Amen. We have made God our habitation by being born again. We are in Christ Jesus, and because we're in Him, there is therefore now no condemnation, amen, whatsoever. He says, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifies or makes and declares righteous. Amen. Isaiah 41 uh, verses 10 through 13. Isaiah 41, 10 through 13. Praise the Lord. I'm saying there is no reason to fear. I get, you know, the, the necessity for common sense and, and using good judgment. But no, there is no reason to be afraid. Praise the Lord. We have a promise after promise after promise from God that He is with us and He is for us. And that if we, just think about this. If he is our habitation, do you think Jesus is at all concerned about the pandemic? I mean, is he looking for a shot? Is he looking for a vaccination? No, no evil is going to come. It can't exist where he is. And if we have made him our habitation, no evil can befall us. Amen. No evil comes near my dwelling. Where's my dwelling? Everywhere I am because I'm in Christ. Everywhere I go, I'm in my hiding place. I'm in the, my habitation is him. Praise the Lord. So I don't have to worry about evil. I don't have to worry about uh, Corona or uh, COVID-19 or whatever name they want to give it next week. It, I'm, I'm comfortable in Jesus. Amen? You remember President Bush used to say that, comfortable in his own skin. Well, I'm comfortable in Jesus' skin. I'm not so much in mine, but in him, I'm more than comfortable. I'm not the least bit anxious. Praise the Lord. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Fear not. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. They that strive with thee shall perish. Remember he says oh, uh, in Psalms 91 that with our eyes we will behold the reward of the wicked. Praise the Lord. And I don't know that that's necessarily talking about people as much as it is the enemy and his influence in people's lives. Praise the Lord. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Praise the Lord. Amen. Revelation 12, verses 10 and 11. Revelation 12, 10, and 11. I'm going to... I think Suzanne's greater concern will probably be Carpal Tunnel before this message is over. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death, or they weren't afraid of losing their life. Praise the Lord. Amen. So in no uncertain terms, amen, he tells us Satan was defeated by Jesus and by what he had done for us, by what Jesus did for us. Amen. Hebrews 2, verses 14 and 15. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Praise the Lord. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Praise the Lord. So today all we have to do is submit to God, or literally to his word of righteousness, resist Satan's influence with the word, and he will flee from us. Now, that's the Word of God. That's just not my opinion. That's what God says. We resist the, the devil with the Word of God. And when we do that, that's exactly what Jesus did in the wilderness when he was tempted, uh, amen, after fasting for 40 days. And he's telling us this is, it works the same way for us. We, we have made him our habitation, so we function the same way that he functions. Amen? And so when the devil comes against us, whether it's a pandemic, whether it's personal issues or whatever it might be, the way we combat him is we take the sword of the Spirit, we declare what God has said about the situation, and that causes the devil to run like his hair is on fire. 
He's, he's frightened. He's afraid when he knows that the person he's dealing with is just like Jesus. He can't tell the difference. If you're using the Word of God, if you're declaring the Word of God the way Jesus did, the devil doesn't know the, the difference in our voices. He knows the Word of God, and he knows that it is settled. Amen? Praise the Lord. So today all we have to do is submit, like I said, to the Lord and trust in His Word to fulfill itself in our lives. Praise the Lord. We're overcomers by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb, right? 1 Peter chapter 5, uh, verses 8 through 10. 1 Peter 5, 8 through 10. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom? Resist steadfast in the faith. Or in other words, then the devil, we resist the devil steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Verse 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. If you can, uh, Suzanne, go back to verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Praise the Lord. Now, here's the deal. In the New Covenant, or the New Testament, that phrase, the faith, simply refers to what Christ did for us. Amen? Christ being made sin for us, that we may be made the righteousness of God in Him. Amen? That's the faith that He's talking about here. Amen? So, look now, let's look at this in 1 John chapter 5. Verses 13 to 15. Again, we are the righteousness of God in Him. We make Him our habitation, as Psalms 91 says. We are righteous. We are the righteousness of God. Praise the Lord. Identical to Jesus. Amen. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Remember He said in Psalms 91, I, I have set you high up. Why? Because you have believed in my name. You have known my name. Praise the Lord. What's, what's God's name? Jesus is the name above every name. Praise the Lord. So he, he's telling us these things. Jesus, the God in the flesh. Thing, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of Him. Amen? So, the name of the Son. What's the name of the Son? The Word of God. The Word became flesh, right, and dwelt among us. So, the, the name is the Word of God. And uh, verse 14 says, uh, if you can go back, 14, and this is the confidence that we have. That word literally translates, this is the authority that we have in Him. The Word of God is our authority. That's what gives us uh, a power over the enemy and over situations and circumstances are, are the, is the Word of God. Amen? So here's the deal. Sin is not blocking blessings from our lives. It's our lack of understanding what God has provided for us. Our sin has already been dealt with. There is therefore no, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? So here's the, the deal is, it, it, if we've got issues in our life, it isn't sin that's causing these problems. Not for us. Amen? Amen? It's, it's, it's been dealt with. It's, it's been taken care of. Amen? Romans chapter 4 and verse 8. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 4 and verse 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Everybody say, that's me. I'm the man. I'm the guy. I'm the gal. I'm the one that he doesn't impute sin to. Amen? Because... There is no condemnation for us because we're in Christ Jesus. Is, did Jesus ever sin? Never. Amen. We're in Him. We're in the sinless being. Amen. This God, amen, man. Praise the Lord. So it doesn't say we're blessed because we never missed the mark. It doesn't say we're blessed because we never did sin or never would sin. Amen. It says that we are blessed because God doesn't impute sin to us. Sin doesn't exist for us. As far as God's concerned. Amen. James 1 verses 16 and 17. James 1 verse 16 and 17. Praise the Lord. Do not err, my beloved brethren. That would be a good thing to learn, right? How not to err. 
Praise the Lord. That's what, that's what Peter's telling us. He's going to show us how not to err. Every good and perfect gift comes from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, nor shadow of turning. Okay, what is he telling us? This didn't come. This, this stuff didn't come from God. It's an error. People who think that this is a punishment of some kind or judgment of some kind, they don't, they're, not, they're not reading the Bible. Amen? James teaches us how to stay out of error. Amen? And how to avoid it by teaching if it's not good and perfect, it's not from God. It's from some other source. It's from the enemy. Amen? It's from natural things. Amen? So people that call this judgment of God, they're just plain wrong. I'm sorry. They're just missing it. Amen? In this world, we will have tribulations. This world's going to have diseases. It's going to have wars. It's going to have rumors. It's going to have all those things. We know that. But in Jesus, we have peace because He has overcome the testing and the trying of this world. Amen? And we have a victory. We have the victory. Amen? If we know our righteousness in Christ, our covenant with God, and the promises of His Word. Praise the Lord. That makes our habitation. That makes up our dwelling place. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Praise the Lord. And uh, my spitting, I'm doing it already here this morning. That's why we have the six foot. We may go on for, with that forever as far as <laughs> me preaching. Fortunately, that first row of pews is well over six feet, so you're safe. Be careful for nothing. Don't worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Verse 19. We're still in Philippians 4. Verse 19. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. See, good and perfect gifts are from above. And they cometh down, it says, from the Father of lights, which means they are ours right here and right now. We're, we're supposed to be able to use them and enjoy them here and now. Or he wouldn't send them down. He'd just keep them there and hold them for us when we get to heaven. Amen. But they come down for us because we need them in a fallen world. We need the perfect gifts. We need the light of, uh, of the revelation of God to dominate in our lives if we're going to be successful in overcoming the enemy. Praise the Lord and his uh, minions. Praise God. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Acts 20 and verse 32. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Sanctified simply means to be set apart. Amen. And so God has given us the gift of faith. He's given us the gift of grace. He's given us the gift of authority and He's given it to us here and now. It's a gift that has come down from heaven from the Father of lights. Amen? And, you know, we've all heard this ex the expression, uh, seeing is believing. Amen? But that's not the case. Amen? The Word of God says, believing is seeing. Praise the Lord. Faith is able to look through the problem or through the obstacle and the situations and see the end results because they're published right here. Whatever the, whatever the attack, whatever the, the confrontation is, there is an end result that is written down in the Word of God, and that's what we are to make our focus, amen? Not the situation, not the circumstances, but what God has said regarding it, amen? Faith is the substance of things, amen? Faith is the substance of things. Look at uh, 2 Peter uh, 1 and 3. 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 3. Praise God. So according as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue. So He's given us divine, his, according to His divine power, He has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. Amen. So here's what he's saying. This, this is what he's talking about right here. According to his divine power, hath he given to us all things, all the things that pertain to life and godliness are right here, the promises of God that deal with the, the issues of life and the problems of life. Amen? So words transport faith is what he's telling us. Amen? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Praise the Lord. No weapon formed against us, right? If, I'm, if I've made God my habitation, if I'm in the word of God, 
sheltered, um, amen, under his wings, then no evil can befall me. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 10, verses 6 through 8. We speak to storms. We speak to viruses. And they die. Amen. I really think the church, and I think Don said this last week, but I think really part of the issue here is the church needs to rise up and start declaring some stuff and stop just receiving it the way the world is and being freaked out by it all the time. It's time for us, when we start hearing the updates on the COVID-19, we need to be declaring something to that. Amen. We need to be saying the truth, what God has said, that that thing is dead. We, de we declare it to be deceased, amen, to no longer have an impact on our lives. Hallelujah. It is over and gone and done with. Praise the Lord. It's no different than the enemies of the children of Israel, that God would go against them as long as they put their confidence in Him. He would defeat. He would go before them and defeat the enemy. That's what God is looking for right now. He moves based on His Word, not on our wants. Amen. We can want as long as we want. But until we start declaring what he has said about it, God can't do anything about it. Amen. The word, as far as God's concerned, it's already settled. This thing has already been dealt with. Amen. We just need to look to the end of this thing instead of looking at the momentary issues that we're dealing with. Right. But the righteousness, which is of faith, speaks on this wise. Say not in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Now, why would he say that? Because Christ is already here. We have made him our habitation. He has made us his habitation. We are one with him. Praise the Lord. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So he's saying, we don't need to call him to come down. We don't need to call him to come up. We have the word of God in us. And all we've got to do is put it in our mouth and begin to speak it. And we release Jesus. We release the promises of God or the word of God into the environment. And the environment cannot withstand it. Amen. There is no weapon formed against us that can prosper. Amen. We have the most powerful tool and weapon that the earth or the world has ever known or will ever know. And it's right here between the pages of this book, the Holy Bible. Amen. Praise God. Faith is the substance of things. Faith is the ability to look through the problem or the obstacle or the situation and see the end, see the results. Amen. Faith is the substance of things. Praise God. Amen. So, hallelujah. Amen. Let's look at uh, the promises in your mouth first. Amen. So we have to say it. That's why he says power uh, of life and death are in the tongue. So we have this power. We have this promise, but it has to, be, it has to get into our mouth. We have the word of God. We have Jesus. Amen. But it has to get into our mouth. Amen. Because when you speak it, now just think about this for a minute. When you speak it out of your own mouth. It's great to read it. It's great to hear it from somebody else. But when you speak it, your inner ear hears different. Have you ever listened to your voice on a tape or a CD or something? I mean, it never sounds like it sounds to you, right? It always sounds like, well, who's that wonky character talking? I mean, that doesn't sound right. Why? Because you always hear yourself through your inner ear. Amen. You're not, you're, you know it's you, right? You could be confused about all the other voices, but you know your voice because it's the only one that sounds like you in your inner ear. Amen. And so the promise is in your mouth and then in your heart. You speak the word of promise out of your mouth and it's picked up by the inner ear and it's fed into the human spirit. Praise the Lord. The human spirit is what's like God now after we've been born again. God's word in the mouth of the righteous, amen, is self-energizing. Amen. It's a reproducing a dunamis or a reproducing power that generates faith, which is the divine energy of God. Now, hey, we've made him our habitation, have we not? That's what, that's what this is all about. That's what he's talking about. The divine energy of God, and it will move mountains. Amen. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, speak to the mountain. If there's a mountain there, amen, just say something to it. If there's an obstacle, if there's an issue, speak to it. See, the things that God has given us, which are, is our inheritance, which is this right here, amen, it's His will, it's, our test, it's His will and testament, but it's our, amen, inheritance, praise the Lord. And so the things that God has given us, or this inheritance, come through the promises. Praise the Lord. John 15, verse 7. Glory to God. John 15, verse Praise the Lord. 
If you abide in me, if I am your habitation, right? If you have made me your dwelling place, if you have made me your habitation, and my words abide in you, you can ask whatever you want, and it'll be done for you. That's powerful. I mean, think about it. If we have, if we abide in Him, if we have made, if we have done what 91, uh, Psalms 91 says, I have made the Lord my habitation. Amen. And because I have known His name, He has lifted me up above the fray. Amen. He, ha he has exalted me. He has given me life, long life, healthy life. Praise the Lord. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. You will ask what you will, and it will be done. It can't get any simpler than that. Praise the Lord. God's word in the mouth of the righteous is this self-energizing, amen, power. Praise, praise the Lord. It's dunamis. It's what it calls dunamis. So if he is our habitation and the word abides in us, then you have the will or the inheritance of God in you. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Anybody out there? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So remember, Peter said, God has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And he gives it through the exceeding great and precious promises. Amen. God's will. 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have become one with him. He is our dwelling place. Amen. So while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are are eternal. So God's method is to take an eternal force, which is faith, and cause the things that are seen, temporary things, amen, to be temporal, or they are temporal, they're subject to change. So if you can see it, if you can feel it, if you can touch it, or you can taste it, if it's COVID-19, amen, if you can be impacted by it, if you can be touched by it, then you can take your faith, the Word of God, and you can change it. That's what he's telling us. I don't need no stinking vaccination. How about you, John? You want another shot? Praise the Lord. No, I, I'm not against people getting shots. I'm just saying, hey, if I don't, I, why do I have to take a shot if I have the greater one in me? I have the thing that fights off every kind of germ, every kind of evil, every kind of disease. I'm, that's my dwelling place. And I'm his dwelling place. Praise the Lord. Remember, the faith, right, is what... Uh, amen. The faith is what Christ has done for us. The faith. Amen. It's all the promises of God, especially that we are the righteousness of God in Him. Yes. Praise the Lord. So here's some good news. All evil is temporary. Amen. That includes COVID-19. All evil is temporary. Amen. So there is no permanent evil. Words are expressions of thoughts and desires. God's word is the express image of his substance or his person, the scripture says. So divine energy or faith in action is God's personality being manifested through you because we are partakers of God's divine nature. Did you get that? Let me, let me say it again. See, God's word is the express image of his substance. Now faith is the substance, right? So stay with me. Faith is the substance or the person of God. So divine energy or faith in action is God's personality being manifested through you as a partaker of God's divine nature. Hey, we have the opportunity to manifest God in these kind of situations. This is how God is glorified in the midst of a world who is wringing its hands and scared to death because they have no real confidence in God because they don't really know God. Amen? Seek first the kingdom of God. His righteousness. Jesus. Amen? And all those things, everything else is added. Praise the Lord, John. Exactly. We have been inoculated by the blood of Jesus. Yes. Amen. That's how they get the serums, right? They take blood from people who have been infected. Hey, didn't Jesus suffer every disease and every sickness on that 
huh? on the cross? He did. He already had COVID-19, and he's given us the injection or the inoculation to fend it off from us. The blood of Jesus. We are overcomers by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. By the inoculation of being born again into Jesus. Good word, John. Let's wrap this up. Romans chapter 8 and 1 again. There is therefore now. Now. Now is always now. Yes. It'll be now tomorrow. Yes. Amen. You'll still be under no condemnation tomorrow when now comes tomorrow. Amen. But there is therefore now. No condemnation to them who are in or which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. And that's not talking about sin because we've already dealt with that. The sin's already been, that issue has already been taken care of. He's talking about walking in agreement with God. Praise the Lord. So, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. Right here, praise God. Now verses 28 through 31. And we'll close with this. Romans 8, 28 through 31. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called. And whom He called, them He also justified. And whom He justified, them He also glorified. Remember Jesus' prayer? Amen. That we would be one with Him and He and them and that we and us. That we would all share that glory. Praise the Lord. This is how it happens. This is how it's done. Praise God. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us... Who can be against us? Nothing is greater than God. Amen. If God's for us, the enemy's defeated. It's just a question of us standing in that faith to see that reality manifest itself through us, through faith in the Word of God. Everybody give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So just keep saying what God says about the situation. Make Him your habitation and no evil will befall you. Praise the Lord. He has become our source, our dwelling place. Amen. Our protection, our provision. He's everything. Amen. And we have him. So who can be against us? Praise the Lord. Have a great week. Walk in the assurance of God's victory over every situation. Use your head. Be respectful of other people, but do not fear what the enemy has brought because God has already defeated this thing. And we have, as John so rightly has expressed, we've been injected with an inoculation that wards off any disease or any other efforts that the enemy has to bring against us. Praise the Lord. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. God bless you all. You're dismissed. Hope to see you next week in Jesus' name.